Hello, hello. Welcome to the PG-ish Podcast. I'm Erin with your parental guidance to help you grow yourself as a parent and raise healthy, happy, and successful humans. Hey friend, thanks for joining me today. Before I share some ideas from Burt Jacobs, one of the brothers behind the Life is Good t-shirt movement, I want to remind you to head over to my website, pgishparenting.com, to learn more about us, to catch up on previous episodes, and to become a member of the Weary to Revived course. You can also check out our sponsors like BetterHelp Online Therapy, Love Your Melon, and Booking.com in the show notes. I don't love ads, but I do love these companies, which my family has benefited from greatly. I believe you'll like them also. Again, you can check out more of their company details and deals in the show notes. Okay, I've said it before, but I'll say it again. You as the parent set the tone in your home. You not only lead by example, but the energy you put out is what you'll get in return. As with anything, you should be giving that which you want to receive. If you're only going through the motions to get through the day, like mealtime or the bedtime story to reclaim your independence, you're truly missing it. Now, Not every day is going to be rainbows and butterflies. Believe me, I get it. But as Tony Robbins has said, where focus goes, energy flows. That being said, you can seize the opportunities to reorganize the energy in yourself and in your home to turn it into something good, even with basic rituals you do daily. In fact, one of the tools noted in today's talk is something I do with my girls, either on the way home from school or at the dinner table, and it certainly shifts the mood. Today, Bert Jacobs will explain how three simple words could help people to focus on the good, unlock imagination, and build a boundless community around courage and compassion. Check it out. Our mom kept the family together. She was the first powerful optimist in our lives. She showed us how to change the energy in a situation, and she did it masterfully. Our mom didn't just read us bedtime stories. She acted out the characters. She became the pirate and took us off in forbidden seas. She became the queen and took us up the marble steps of glorious castles. She took us into the emerald forest and became the wolf. And we begged for more. We loved it. She unlocked our imagination. Could there be a greater gift that a parent could give their kids? Our mom turned off the television and she taught us to draw. She put paper and crayons and pencils on the ground, and she challenged us to imagine things that didn't exist, flying submarines, create new animals, combine animals, and my brother and I loved it. We begged for more and more. Maybe the greatest gift that our mom, Joan, gave to us was that at the dinner table, and there was lots of dysfunction in this home, sometimes my dad was in a bad mood, Sometimes the police were pulling up outside for one of our older brothers. They weren't bad guys. They just didn't follow all the rules. And um, my mom would look around the table at her six kids and she would say, tell me something good that happened today. Very, very simple. Individually, she would acknowledge the obstacles. But when we were together as a team, she encouraged us to focus on what was right rather than what was wrong. Whatever people focus on will grow, and it's contagious. So all of a sudden, we'd be riffing on the funniest things that happened that day. We'd be talking to each other about something great that happened at school. And all of a sudden, we were acting like a family. When we look back, we think, wow, Mom, how did you do that? Try asking that question to start off your next meeting instead of allowing people to point the finger, instead of allowing people to start listing all the things that are wrong with your organization. Try doing it at the dinner table like my mom. It changes the energy. Optimists see opportunities. They don't, they they acknowledge the obstacles, but we focus on the opportunities and we grow the opportunities. It's very simple. When my brother and I graduated from college, we decided that we wanted to make a living selling our art. We were very intimidated by the world of fine art. So we said, how about t-shirts? T-shirts is financially accessible to us. We'll design things and we'll sell them in the street. We bought this van. We called it the Enterprise. We told each other we were going to boldly go where no t-shirt guy's gone before. 
And believe it or not, we traveled in that van and we slept in it at night for five and a half years. Five and a half years, lots of great stories, lots of great memories, but we weren't commercially successful, not at all. One day we had a conversation, and that conversation changed our lives forever. It was a conversation about how the media always focuses on what's wrong with the world, rarely focuses on what's right with the world, always telling us, giving us the six o'clock violent murder report instead of the six o'clock news. And we thought, well, the six o'clock news, you know, these bad things do happen, but good things happen too. So where's the balance? In this dark and gloomy conversation, as optimists, we saw an opportunity. And the opportunity was to create some simple symbol that represented what's right with the world, that allowed people to celebrate what's right with the world, what's good in the world. So simple, right? Three simple words, life is good. The first person who inspired us and the biggest inspiration for life is good is our mom, Joan. And uh, unfortunately, last March, we got the news that our own mom had uh, terminal lung cancer, never smoked a cigarette in her life. And when we found out that it was moving fast and that there wasn't much we could do, we went to mom and said, you know, is there anything that you'd love to do? She lived such an ordinary life. Would you like to go to Europe? Would you like to meet the president? I said, you know, we don't know the president, but we'll get the shit done, mom. <laughs> and she said, no, you know, she thought about it and she said, I'm, I'm the happiest I've ever been. I'm scared of the cancer, she said, but I just want to be here. I don't want to be in the hospital, and I want to be with your father and you kids and the little ones. She's got 10 grandkids these days. And um, so we drove back in the city. They still live in the suburbs, and um, it bothered us, me and JJ. And we talked about it all week. Your own mom's dying. You know it. You want to help her, but how can you help her if she doesn't let you? And then J.J. figured it out. He called me and said, you know, mom loved with all her heart her whole life. And now that she knows she's dying, she doesn't have to run around to make up for love. She wishes she gave. And I thought, wow, you got it. So the next morning I got in the car and drove out to see my mom. Of course, I took credit for the theory. I said, mom, we figured it out. And she said, oh, that's really sweet, but I did think of something. <laughs> I said, what? And she said, not now while I'm alive, but after I go, I want you to throw me a really good party. So we did. We threw an incredible party with music and dancing and food, and we can only hope that it lived up to her one request. Today, I ask you the question, since that day will come for you and that day will come for me. When that day comes, will we have to run around and make up for love we wished we gave? Or will we sit back like my mom did with a big smile and say, throw me a good party? It's your story. Your life is your story. And it doesn't last forever. At the beginning of our story, all of us, everybody tells us we need more. We need more stuff. We need more education. We need more money. But as we get older, further along in our story, we all come to the realization that the only thing we need more of is time. Time to do the things that you love and time to be with the people you love. You have to protect your time with your life because it is your life. Yes, yes. Time is love and your most precious commodity that you may too easily take for granted. Also, optimism is truly magnetic. It's such a simple concept, yet it can change your life. And as you likely know, there's enough negativity in the world, that's for sure. So let your home be a safe haven for the good stuff so that you can soak up these precious days that go by way too fast. Also, getting older can translate into more skepticism and a severe drop-off of childlike wonder. Let these rituals give you a new perspective while invigorating you and your child. Intentionally connect with yourself and your kiddo by asking questions like, tell me something that good that happened, or who made you smile today? 
Whatever question you ask, be like Bert's mom. Be the game changer that sparks a meaningful legacy with your kiddo. To learn more about Bert or their company, Life is Good, check out their website, lifeisgood.com. Links to their website, their book, today's full talk called Do What You Love, Love What You Do, as well as our sponsors can be found in the show notes. If this talk resonated with you, please subscribe and leave a comment or review on Apple Podcasts or share with a parent friend so that they can learn and grow alongside their kiddo like you. See you next time. Bye.